Thank you very much. Fellow Toastmasters guests, a lot of time has gone by since I moved to Kansas City from Atlanta in 1986. The reason I moved back is because I missed my family, a grown woman still homesick. I guess you could say I finally settled down as I have lived in the same house for 33 years. I'd like to tell you the story about my house. It goes back a little bit in time though. When I was 12 years old, my best friend Kathy asked me if, if I wanted to stay all night at her Aunt Elaine's house. And I said, oh my gosh, yes. And then I asked my mom if it'd be okay. And she says, all right, but be good. And I have a feeling she probably talked to Kathy's mother about this ahead of time. Well, what I remember the most about that overnight visit is in her bathroom, she had a, a door on the wall and you could open it and you could see the towels and, and um, soap, shampoo, wash rags, and then, then you could shut it. And I thought, well, that's pretty ingenious. I mean, what if you were in a shower and you didn't have a towel and you had to go out, out into the hall and open up the pantry closet or whatever to get a towel? This saves so much time and effort. That always stuck in my memory. And when I was 12, I told myself one day, I'm going to find me a house just like this and stay in it forever. In 1987, I did buy a diable bungalow that was built in 1930. It's in South Kansas City, and it's located in a neighborhood called Waldo. And they've written a book about this neighborhood, and it's called Waldo of all things. <laughs> and my house, the first thing I went to look for when I was house hunting, this is the first and only house I looked at, I went to the bathroom and there was the little opening for the towels and whatnot. And I was sold. A year later, my mom was, uh, she lived up a north part of Kansas City. She was visiting me. She looked down the street, three doors down, and there was, there was a house for sale there. It had been on sale for really a long time. And she said, well, you know, that's a really nice house. I wonder why nobody's bought it. And I said, well, rumor has it that a rock band used to live there. And they used to have wild parties in the swimming pool in the backyard. Well, she just thought that was wonderful. She said, oh, I love that house. I want to go look at it. We looked at it. She bought it. And I said, I am so glad. I'm so glad you bought it and that we're going to be neighbors. She was a good neighbor. She left treats for me on my doorstep. Pot rolls, stew, freshly baked cinnamon rolls. And as I headed to work every morning, I'd go out to my car and then I'd look down her way. And she would open up her door and she would wave and I'd wave to her. We spent many happy hours on her sofa trying to solve the world's problems. She was my neighbor for 19 years until she needed a higher level of care. And we continued our talks until she passed away 12 years ago. Mom's house, which really wasn't her house anymore, was torn down about five years ago. The owner hadn't moved in yet, but he heard there'd been a fire in the kitchen. And he was worried about the wiring in this 1930 home and he decided just to tear it down. I later heard he went bankrupt because of his business, but I also suspect it might also been about losses associated with this house. With the passage of time, the neighbors stopped speculating as to the fate of the empty lot, and we just simply enjoyed the peacefulness of the grass that was growing. This summer, Word spread that it, the owner was actually going to build a house on the lot. 
he shared the, the plans for the house with the neighbors on either side, so they'd be reassured that it would be in keeping with the neighborhood, the Tudor style. Now, the Tudor style in our neighborhood, um, the houses were built by um, Napoleon Dybel. He built 5,000 homes in this neighborhood, and they were uh, known for the uniqueness of each house. A lot of them were, had brick and stone in them, and the windows were round, and um, each one was unique. The floor plan was about the same in all of them, but each had their own unique thing. Mine looks like a castle in the front, and on top of the turret, there's an, um, an old woman, and she's chasing a hen. <laughs> And that's been on there, I think, since the house was built in 1930. I think mom would be glad to see that the house is going up. She believed in progress instead of just looking back in the past. Yet the stories and memories of the old house do live in me, and they always will. Stories help us honor the past and make sense of the present. Stories help us deal with loss and change. Stories encourage us and make us stronger. Stories help us remember. And most important of all is that we can share our stories with others. We all have a story to tell.